In this video, I'm going to walk through how I deal with a merge conflict that arises when I'm integrating changes from the main branch into a feature branch. So this is something that can come up a lot in collaborative development with a version control system like Git, where other people on your team are making changes on their feature branches. Those changes are going up onto a system like GitHub as pull requests. Those eventually get approved and merged into the main branch of work. And now you have to contend with those changes in relation to what you've been working on on your own. So for this scenario, I've got uh, two files that I'm going to wrap up into a commit. I'm going to do a git add patch to look at those and confirm them. Yes, I want that, so I hit Y. I want this change as well, so I hit Y. And then I still have this untracked file hanging out, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and say git add in the file name. And now if I do a git status, we can see that the two files that I want included in this commit are here. So I'm going to say git uh, commit, and I will say add the username column for the user model, something like that. So I add that, I write in quit to create that commit, and now if I say git log, I can see that commit is sitting at the top of my branch here. Um, this is the head, this is the name of the branch. All these other commits are actually from the main branch. They're, they're not a part. Uh, they're not a part of this feature branch. They're just what I brought along um, when I created the uh, feature branch. So now I'm going to jump back to uh, the main branch because, and I'm going to jump over to GitHub real quick. I can see that some changes were merged in recently, and these changes involved you know, additions to a few files, and then there were changes to the schema RB. So th there's a possibility of a merge conflict there. Um, and so we're going to see if that comes up here. So first I'm going to do a, make sure I have everything locally. So I'm going to say git full rebase. My branches, my main branch is up to date, so that's good. So I'm going to return to my previous branch using the dash to signify that I want to go back to the most recent branch that I was on. And that takes me there. And now I want to integrate the changes from main into here so that I can be working with the most up-to-date version of the changes. Because if I were to push up a PR as is, I'm going to hit a merge conflict. So I need to resolve that locally first. So I'm going to do git rebase main. And so that's going to pull in the changes from the main branch and then rebase my unique changes on this branch over the top of them. And that resolves, results in a merge conflict. So let's see, git status. I can see this. So we're in the middle of it trying to rebase my changes. We're in the middle of git trying to rebase my changes on top of the changes that came in from main. This green one here, under the changes to be committed section. That's good to go. There weren't uh, any conflicts there, and that makes sense because it's a new file. Uh, the unmerged paths, though, that, that's where we can find the conflicts that we need to deal with. And in this case, there's a conflict in DB schema RB. So I'm going to have to deal with that. And, and the way that I'll deal with that is I'll just open it up in my editor, whatever editor that is for you. For me, that's Vim. So I'm going to open up that here. And I'm going to be looking for little markings like this, the, the um, less than signs followed by a branch name, um, everything in between that, and then a series of equal signs like this. That's the change for, for one side of the merge conflict, and then everything between the equal signs and the greater than brackets is everything from the other side of the conflict. So that those are the two things we need to resolve between. So we've got one here, and then if I search for... Um, more of these. We've got one down here as well. And this one's a little more complicated because there's like several changes here and then one line change here. Although now that I look at it, I realize um, I have a sense of what I need to do here. Um, the thing is, is it's very context dependent. 
you have to look at the uh, changes that are coming in. You have to look at your own changes. You have to think about the uh, that particular situation, what uh, sort of end result for the code makes sense. For me, in this case, um, I'm realizing that someone else added these series of lines, you know, 50 through 54. They added them oops, uh, as, as part of a, a PR that's now integrated in main. And that's fine. Those should be there. And additionally, this new line that I added should be there. It, it all needs to go in together. So I just need to create a configuration of these lines that um, both preserves the existing behavior and introduces my behavior. So to do that, I can just um, edit away the merge conflict markings like that. And now this is this section of it is resolved. I've removed the merge conflict markings and I've put the code in a state that is good. Um, if we back up real quick, um, the, there's not like any magic to this. You just want to put the code into a good state and an equally valid state would be for me to move this line um, up on top of all of these changes and then get rid of the merge conflict markings. That's fine too. Um, so that's resolved now. Um, I'm going to jump up here. And this is the only other one. Because if, um, if I search for these again, this, and I'm hitting next, there's nothing else. So th this is the only other conflict in this file that I have to deal with. Um, so what I need to do is I need to look at these, and um, I can't just leave both of them in. If I if I were to just do what I did on the last one, and just delete both of those, uh, this isn't going to be valid syntax. We've now got sort of two openings of this block, um, and that's a problem. So I'm going to back up. I need to pick one of these essentially, and because this is a scenario that comes up for me a lot uh, as I uh, write migrations in the context of a Rails code base. I know what I'm looking for is the one with the later timestamp. It's it's this one here because that timestamp is reflective of the work that I've done that I'm adding on top of the existing work. Um, but let's say I get it wrong. Let's say I'm I'm maybe going too quick or I just uh, didn't quite under understand the change and and I get it wrong. So now I've picked uh, the smaller timestamp. Okay, so I've got that and I um, write and quit and now I say get status resolved all the merge conflicts. But this is still sitting here in unmerged paths. So I need to add it to the changes to be committed. So I'll say git add dbschema.rb. And if I say git status again, we'll see that that has been moved up to the changes to be committed. And so from here, I can say git rebase continue, and it will proceed forward. If at this point I think I've gotten in over my head. I uh, I don't like the changes I'm making. I just want to like start over on the rebase. Uh, I could do abort, and that would just roll me back to before I did the uh, original command to to rebase main into this branch. But I'm feeling good about this. I'm going to hit continue. Hit git rebase continue. It applies my change on top. And now if I say git log, you can see the commit I wrote is right here on the very top of the log. And then right under that is this change that came in from main. And we can see that uh, origin main branch is, is marking that commit as well. So great, I've resolved my merge conflict and I can push up this change, uh, create a PR and, and move forward with my development. Now, uh, if you'll remember to a minute ago, I chose the wrong uh, line of the two. Uh, when I was resolving the top merge conflict. And so maybe maybe I'll put this into a PR and that comes up in, in the code review of that PR. Someone notices that discrepancy and they say, hey, I think you got this one wrong. Um, well, I need to go back in and fix that then. And it's like, well, what, what do I do at this point? I've, I've already sort of like uh, created the this sort of like a new commit that is rebasing my changes on, on top of the other. Um, you may have heard that rebase is sort of like a destructive action. And um, so we, we put ourselves in a position where uh, it's maybe not that easy to undo it. Um, one choice is to just go in and amend that commit. 
uh, make make the the change to it. If we say get show, we can see. Oh, where is that line? Oops. Get uh, log. These changes here. Oh, actually, I know why. So if I say um, get show for that change, I'm only seeing this, and so that already is a little suspicious. Like, why do I have a change to? my schema RB without having um, sort of a matching change to the uh, top of the schema RB file. And that's because I got that uh, the, the rebase wrong. So if I say get log and actually look at um, not the um, not the most recent one on head, but if I say head and then back one, I can see, okay, there's some other changes here. And then I get down to the schema file. And here's where where the, where the schema files off. Um, so I could go back through and manually fix that, but I, I've actually already lost track of what this uh, timestamp should have been. So I need to, I guess, go back in time. And the way I can do that is with the ref log. So I'm gonna say git ref log. And this is a very overwhelming um, screen of output to see. Um, but if I take a moment to look at it and to read it carefully, um, we can find some like points of reference and, and get a sense of what we're looking at. So the first thing here says rebase finished, and then it's returning me to be on this branch that I've had checked out. Okay. The next thing says uh, we're, we're doing a rebase. It's rebasing this uh, commit that I had on, onto the head. So we knew that's what was happening. We, we initiated that action. Um, Right before that is the uh, actual command where we said rebase uh, the, the main branch. So it, it's doing that. And then right before that, we have a, a checkout command. So reflog is even recording for us um, when we move between branches. So we're moving from main to, uh, to add username for user. And let's see. I mean, I guess even at this point, even at this point, we've got a, a commit SHA. This is a SHA right here that we can uh, reference that uh, is, is sort of a previous point in time that can tell us things about the contents of different files, the, the structure of, our, of the tree. And so um, at this point, that's even far enough back in time where we haven't clobbered the, the heading of, of that one file in the rebase. So I can say git reset hard. Now hard is doing get reset hard is a destructive action. So um, want to make sure we're really like thinking through what we're doing as we use it. In this case, I'm on my feature branch. I'm, you know, I've, I've settled on the uh, sort of point in time that I want to go back to. I, I know what I'm uh, what the current state of my tree is, and I know what I want it to look like. So I, I've got some like reference points to make sure that this get reset hard goes well. Um, if you do do get reset hard and it's uh, you don't get the result you want, then you just back to the ref log, find a, a different point of reference, and and use that. So I'm going to do this get reset hard, and what does it say? It says head is now at th this this here. So as a reminder, man get reset. Um, this is going to reset the current head to the specified state. So this head is my my like feature branch that I'm on. So I've reset this feature branch to be in the state of whatever things looked like at, at this SHA right here. And so if I do a git log, there's not a whole lot to see here except for this commit that I added here and then this one that that had been on main, but the 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 one that we sort of rebased in is now gone. So we we've essentially undone the rebase that we just did, and that gives us a chance to do it again. So now I can say git rebase um, main. I have the same merge conflict that I had before. That's great. Um, we can see that here. It's the same thing. So I can open up the one with the merge conflict in my editor. I can go through, and this is the piece I want to delete. 
This is the older time stamp. This is the newer time stamp. I get that right this time. Now I still have to jump down and resolve this other one as well. So I get rid of these lines here. That's all taken care of. I don't think there's any other patterns like that. So I can save and quit this file. And now I'm going to do a get status. This, all the merge complex have been resolved here, but we still need to add it like before. Schema.rb. Another get status, we can see that everything is in the changes to be committed area. And this is the point at which I can do a get rebase continue. And now if I say git log, in between this install node and my commit are the changes that we just rebased from main. And if I do a git show, which will be on the head, then awesome. We can see this change as well as the addition at the top of the schema RB file uh, with, the, with the correct timestamp. So that is how I do a rebase, how I resolve a merge conflict that arrives during a rebase, and also a little bit about how I use the ref log to undo a sort of oops moment when, when, I've, when I've gotten uh, a rebase wrong. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. I will have more videos like this covering different aspects of Git workflows coming out soon, so um, keep an eye out for those. Definitely leave any comments or questions uh, down below, and I will see you in the next video.